Step six, installing SAP. The first step is to set root permissions on the install.sh file, just to make sure there aren't any issues with accessing content. So we'll type chmod plus x and then install.sh. And now the last thing to do is type period forward slash install dot sh to kick off the installation. Type yes to agree to the terms. And now we'll be entering a password. And this is the SAP administrator account password that you'll use to start and stop your SAP environment. And it's really important that you use something you're not going to forget. And also, it must be alphanumeric. So something like password 01 would be fine. But you wouldn't want to have dollar signs, pound signs, question marks, because that may cause issues during the SAP installation. So go ahead and type out your password. And re-enter it. And the installation will kick off. And actually, while this install is running, we can go ahead and download and install SAP GUI along with the SAP GUI patch. So let's do that now. Download the SAP GUI zip file. And it's around one gigabyte, so go ahead and click download. And then direct download. And there should also be a download option at the top right of your screen. While that one's downloading, let's come back over to the SAP BWTraining.net SAP access page and also download the SAP GUI patch. Once again, direct download. Okay, so once the larger first zip file completes, we have to run an extraction on that file. So locate where you downloaded the 5012720 underscore six dot zip file. It's more than likely in your downloads folder. And it might take a second to actually render because it's such a large file. But once it shows up, just right click and choose extract all. Extract. And that would just create a separate folder with all the GUI installation files. And we can't yet install the patch because SAP GUI must first be installed before we can patch it. So for now, let's just pop back over to our SAP installation. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and check on the SAP GUI extraction that we ran earlier. And now in order to kick off this installation, go ahead and open this folder, Prez1, GUI, Windows, Win32, and then come on down to the Setup All and double click. Choose Yes. Click Next. And now click on the SAP GUI for Windows 7.4. And then because I'm also gonna be using SAP BW and BEX or Business Explorer, I'll check this box as well so I can install that GUI software. 
Click next. 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 And that GUI installation kicks off. And I just fast forward to the install. Then I'll click close. And we can close out of the Win32 folder. And now we can install our patch. So just double click on the GUI 740 underscore 14. Choose yes. Next. And if for any reason it gives you an error, just go ahead and restart your computer that you're installing SAP GUI on, and it should clear up any errors. But obviously you wouldn't want to do that while you're currently in the process of installing SAP on your server. So you can always wait until that server installation completes and then work on rebooting your computer afterwards. But because mine didn't hit any issues, just gonna move forward with the installation. And let's just check back on our SAP server installation. Still moving along nicely. Okay, the SAP GUI patch has been installed as well. We can close out of this. And we no longer need the GUI installation files, but if you'd like, you can always keep that large folder around. You could also go in and add those additional programs that we didn't check. All right, so SAP logon is SAP GUI, and that is now on our desktop. We also have other applications installed, like Business Explorer, which comes with BEX Analyzer, Query Designer, Report Designer, and Web Application Designer. And if we continue to scroll down under SAP Frontend, we have SAP GUI Configuration and SAP Logon. I like to keep my SAP Logon right on my desktop. So all I have to do is double click to open it up And then we'll be adding a new connection, but obviously we don't want to do that until our SAP server is actually live and we can connect to it. So for now, we can just go back and wait for SAP installation to finish. So I'll fast forward till this completes. All right, so as you can see, SAP has just finished installing you'll know it's been successful if you see installation of NPL successful. At this point, you could actually log into your SAP server as it's currently up and running. If for any reason you encountered errors, I'd recommend scrapping this entire Ubuntu server and rebuilding it so you can easily reach out to the turnkey support and they'll spin up a brand new server for you. Because oftentimes some rogue thing will just happen outside of your control that will cause just one-off errors if you could just spin up a new instance of Ubuntu server and then retry the install. It's the best practice to type out everything within terminal and not copy and paste, especially within your host files like etc hosts and hostname, just to make sure you're not introducing additional characters that might cause SAP to have conflicts when it's pulling that data. All right, so now that our installation is complete, let's hop into SAP GUI and add our server IP address so we can get connected.